guys, here we are in video two of lesson 18. And um, this is also number two in your book. So make sure that you're writing notes and following along. How is this tape diagram different from the tape diagram that we had earlier? Kind of similar, right? Except we have a subtraction expression here for our first section. And we have one, two, three, four, five equal parts. And our unknown is up here. And that's the total of the five equal parts altogether. All right. So to find y, what would we need to do first? Maybe you're thinking about solving one third minus one fourth to get started. And then we would know what goes here. And then five of those is going to tell us what is y. All right. That makes sense. Um, seems like we might want to write that out in an equation. Y equals five times, and then make sure we use our parentheses here because we don't want the five to get involved with the one third minus one fourth. There we go make my y look a little bit better. All right. Okay. So now one third minus one fourth. Remember when we are subtracting fractions or adding fractions, they need to have the same denominator, right? So we're going to have to change our one third, multiply it by four over four, right? This is what we would call multiplying by the opposite multiplying four over by four over four, cause it's equal to one. Make sure that it's always the same number on the top and the bottom. And that gives us four twelfths. All right. So then we have to change our one fourth by multiplying it by three over three, same number on the top and the bottom using the opposite over here. And that will give us three twelfths. Now, don't forget that this is a subtraction problem. So 4 minus 3, that's 1 twelfth. Well, that's pretty nice. Okay, so each of these is 1 twelfth. And we know that there's 5 of them. So 5 times... 1 twelfth is equal to 5 twelfths. Very good. All right. So y, our unknown, is equal to 5, not 1. I wonder if I can erase that. It's a little bit messy. Yeah, there we go. All right. Is equal to 5 twelfths. Okay, very good. Could we have written this a little bit differently? Could we have written one third minus one fourth times five? Would that be all right to do? Yeah, because commutative property, we can switch these two. And as long as we have these in parentheses, we know that we're always going to do our parentheses first. Excellent. All right, let's go on to number three in your book. If you need to pause me and write this down, make sure you get this written down. And clear our screen and move to number three. Okay, very good. Now, number three, we have an expression write an expression to represent the statement and then evaluate the expression. So we're going to go from words now to a numerical expression. So from words to numbers, let's kind of think about what these words mean right here. Okay. Three fifths of the sum of one sixth and two thirds. So the statement is telling us to find three fifths of something. 
What is that something? It is the sum of one sixth and two thirds. So we need to find three fifths of that number. And that number is a sum. Can we find three fifths of that number yet? No, because we have to find the sum of that number first. Okay. Um, after we find the sum of one sixth and two thirds, then can we find three fifths of it? And what will we have to do to find three fifths of it of, right? We're going to have to multiply. Okay. So let's write an expression. Three fifths of means multiply the sum. What does sum mean? Addition. Very good. Addition sum of one sixth and two thirds. All right. Very good. Make sure you're getting that written down because it does say to write an expression to represent the statement. So we got that. Very good. And now it says to evaluate the expression. So we want to make sure that we're solving it. One sixth plus two thirds. Now notice the six and the three here, right? So we don't need to change this to 18, although you could by multiplying it by the opposite, but we could keep our one sixth and change this one to sixes by multiplying by two over two, right? Just a little addition of fraction review there. So that could be four sixths. So now we have one sixth plus four sixths times three fifths. Now this is a good habit to get into where you're rewriting it every time as you're solving. Because when you're taking algebra and you're starting to do a lot of these expressions and equations, you want to be able to show every step. So now I'm going to say 1 6 plus 4 6, that's 5 6 times 3 fifths. And I did my parentheses first, so I don't need to have parentheses anymore. And now I can multiply straight across. Let me just move my picture. Okay, so 3 times 5 is 15, and 5 times 6 is 30. So that leaves us with 15 thirtieths. Can 15 and 30 both be divided by the same number? 15 can be divided by 5 and 3. And 6, 30 can be divided by 5. It can also be divided by 3, but we're dividing by 5 right now because we need to divide both of them by the same thing because 5 fifths is equal to 1. 15 divided by 5 is 3, 30 divided by 5 is 6. So that means that our answer is 3 sixths. Yes? All right. And we did use parentheses right here. Oh, and 3 sixths, because 3 is half of 6, 3 sixths is also equal to 1 half. We didn't assign a letter. We could have said, 3 fifths times 1 6 plus 4 6 is equal to A. And then we could say 1 half is equal to A because we had an unknown value there. Right? All right. Awesome job. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next video and in class. Aloha.